Hello everyone. Welcome to Woodrow's International School. My name is Teacher Gideon. Today we are going to start with a new chapter called Electrical Quantities. Under this chapter and at this level we are going to discuss about six examples of electrical quantities. These are electric current, electric charge, electrical resistance, voltage or EMF or potential difference, electrical power and electrical energy. We will begin with current in electric circuits. Before we proceed, I would like us to define an electric circuit. By definition, an electric circuit is a continuous path made up of electrical components through which electric charge or current flows. So we have important points here in this definition. We have continuous path, we have electrical components and we have current flow. Whenever there is a continuous path, current flow. In an electric circuit, we have electrical components. Examples of electrical components are the cell, battery or power supply. What is the function of a power supply or a cell? The function of a cell is to push current around the circuit or to push electric charge around the circuit. The function of the switch, which is another component, is to complete or break the circuit. How can we complete a circuit? We can complete a circuit by pressing down on the switch. We can break a circuit by releasing the switch. So, a switch is a component of a circuit. The third component we're going to see today is a bulb or a lamp. So what is the function of a bulb? The function is to convert electrical energy into light. We are going to be familiar with the fact that when electric current flows through a power supply, it is given electrical energy. When this current flows through an electrical component, this electrical energy is converted into other forms of energy. If the component is a bulb, the electrical energy carried by the current will be converted into light. If the component is a speaker, the electrical energy will be converted into sound. If the component is a heater, the electrical energy will be converted into heat. So the energy is converted into other forms of energy depending on the component in the circuit. The fourth component is a connecting wire. What is the function of connecting wire? It is 
to conduct current in the circuit. Most conducting wires are made of metal because metals are good conductors of current, particularly copper because it is a good conductor of current and it has a low resistance. In our circuit, we can include other components such as speakers, buzzers, heaters, etc. Again, it is important to note that there are two conditions which have to be met for current to flow in an electric circuit. The first condition is there must be something to push it round the circuit. That thing responsible for pushing current round the circuit is called a power supply or a battery or a cell. So the function of a cell is to push electric charges or push current around the circuit. So without a cell or power supply, there will be no current in a circuit. The second condition is that there must be a complete circuit for current to flow. What do we mean by complete circuit? A complete circuit is a continuous path through which current flows. We can complete a circuit by pressing down on a switch. Now, let us see a picture of an electric circuit. Here, there are two cases. We have A and B. A shows us the construction of an electric circuit in the laboratory. We have a cell here, we have a switch here, and we have a bulb here. These are called components of the circuit. These components are connected by wires. These wires are insulated with plastic. Why? So that no current leaks out from the wires or not co no current flows into other materials. That is why the wires are coated or covered with plastic because plastic is an insulator. It prevents current from leaking out. So these components are actually linked by wires to form a complete circuit. In B below, we have a diagram showing exactly the same connection. This diagram is called the circuit diagram of circuit A. In a circuit diagram like this, the components are represented by symbols. For example, the symbol for a cell is a long line and a short line. The long line is the positive terminal of the cell and the short line is the negative terminal of the cell. The symbol for the switch above is like this. The symbol for the lamp is like this. So when the switch is closed, electric current flows from the positive terminal of the cell through the switch and the bulb back to the negative terminal of the cell. When current flows through the bulb, the bulb shines. Current flows from positive terminal through the switch and bulb 
to the negative terminal. Such a current that flows in the same direction is called direct current. So, direct current is current that flows in the same direction. So, diagram B is showing us the same circuit as diagram A, but in terms of symbols. What is the function of a circuit? The function of a circuit is to transfer energy from the power supply to components in the circuit. A battery, a cell, or a power supply is a source of energy. When these components push current, they transfer energy into the current. When the current flows through electrical component, this energy is then transferred to the surrounding. So we can say that uh, a power supply actually transfers energy to the components in the circuit, which then transfers the energy into the environment. Finally, we are going to talk about good conductors and bad conductors. So what is a good conductor? A good conductor is a material that allows current to flow through. A bad conductor or insulator is a material that does not allow current to flow through. We also have semiconductor. A semiconductor is a material that does not conduct very well. The table below gives us examples of good conductors, insulators and semiconductor. Examples of good conductors, most metals, most metals including copper, silver, gold and steel are examples of good conductors, which means they can allow electric current to flow through easily. So they are good conductors. Insulators are polymers such as perspex, polythene, minerals and glass. These are examples of insulators, which means that they do not allow current to flow through. That is why in circuit, the connecting wires are insulated. They are covered with material such as uh, plastic or perspex because those, these materials are good insulators. We also have liquids. Liquids are semiconductors, which means they cannot conduct electricity very well. They can conduct, but not very well. Take note that good insulators or good conductors are also poor insulators. And good insulators are also poor conductors. Thank you. Next class, we are going to talk about electric current. We are going to define electric current and how to calculate electric current. Thank you.